and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Hermes Light 2, which is an SDR transceiver. Now, what makes this so interesting is that those designers have used a cable modem IC, which has a 12-bit ADC and DAC features. Now, it also has an integrated low noise amplifier. So why is this so special? Well, it all comes down to cost. Is this IC, the AD9866, is a commodity part, which is likely found in your home cable modems. It brings the cost down drastically. This project is also open source, so anyone can go ahead and build this or make their own contributions towards the project. Now, the built Hermes Light 2 covers from 0.1 MHz all the way up to 38 MHz, which is the entire shortwave HF bands. What's also nice is that this SDR can transmit. Not only does it have low power output, it also incorporates a built-in 5 watts amplifier, which can be used for QRP operations. Now, of course, you can connect an external amplifier if you require more power. Now, James N2ADR, a ham radio operator, designed a filter add-on board, which fits nicely into the Hermes Light 2 case. This is required for international regulations for harmonic suppression. Now, the Hermes Light 2 connects to your network via a 1 gigabit Ethernet connection. This makes it nice and easy to remote install or somewhere off your network. Now, there is only one official place where you can order these from, and luckily you can order the boards already populated if you want. You will need the Hermes Light 2 itself, the N2 ADR filter board, and if you don't want to install it in your own case, you can order the enclosure. Maker Fabs will also ship this worldwide and only took around four days to get from China to the UK. Now you can see here how easy it is to put all of these parts together. But before we tighten down the cases, we need to install a heat shim, which will help dissipate the heat from the 5 watt amplifier onto the enclosure. So for now, I will install the boards and the end plates as shown here. This is because we need to drill a small hole in a specific place. And by having the boards already fitted, we can ensure we mark the correct location. Now, this is where the small bolt will come through from the underside of the enclosure. The bolt will pass through the heat shim and a small nut will be used on top to keep it in place. I use something which you can poke through the hole as shown here to mark on the inside of the lower enclosure. I just used a small drill bit to scratch away some of the paint. Now carefully remove the end panels and slide out the boards from the lower enclosure. Make sure you do this slowly so you do not knock or catch any of the components. Now as you can see here, this is the mark that I made. I now need to drill a three millimeter hole. I actually used an M3 tap drill bit for this hole, so an M3 bolt will screw nice and tightly through that hole. Now to further help with heat dissipation, I used a small piece of sandpaper to remove some of the lacquer and paint from the inside of the enclosure, around where the bolt will be coming through. Now we also need to apply a small amount of thermal paste. I just used some leftover from a recent PC build that I used for the CPU. Now apply a small amount to that area you sanded within the enclosure and then a small amount on the underside of the main board as shown here. Now once installed correctly, the heat shim will sit between these two areas to help dissipate the heat. Now make sure that you install the shim the correct way around. You will notice that the shim has one side cut at an angle. That angle part goes towards the middle of the board this is so that the shim does not come in contact with the surface mount components, which are really close by. Now to help align the shim as you slide in the main board, you can use a screwdriver slightly inserted into the shim via the bolt hole in the main board. Carefully slide the main board into the enclosure while helping the shim slide along the enclosure using the screwdriver. Now take your time with this part of the build as you don't want to knock any of those SMD components off. Once you have the main board installed, check to make sure that the hole you drilled can be seen through the board and the shim as the bolt will come through here. You can also look inside the enclosure under the board to make sure that the heat shim has stayed parallel with the enclosure. 
The shim should not be able to move away from the edge of the enclosure as it should be flush with the enclosure sides. But if it has moved, then you may want to check you've installed it correctly. If not installed correctly, this could result in shorts or damage to the SMDs. So make sure you take your time with this part of the installation. So the last part here is to insert the bolt through the bottom enclosure, through the shim, and then through the main board. Now using a nut on the other end to keep it firmly in place. Now before attaching the top part of the enclosure, have another really good look between the bottom enclosure and the main board to make sure that that shim is situated correctly. Now I know I mentioned this a couple of times, but it is extremely important to make sure it's fitted correctly. Now if you haven't done so already, fit the header jumper which goes between the main board and the filter board. This is quite easy to fit and it should align perfectly. Now once fitted, it's now time to complete the build and attach the end panels and the top part of the enclosure. Now the Hermes Light 2 is fully built, it's time to test it. First, I'm going to attach the power cable, which goes off to my 13.8 volt power supply. Now the recommended power supply must be able to supply at least two amps at 13.8 volts. Next, I'll plug in an ethernet cable, which goes off to my router. Now, as we turn on the power supply, we should see the status LED start to illuminate and blink. For more information on what these mean, go ahead and take a look at the Hermes Light 2 wiki page. I may cover these in another video. Now let's connect the antenna. I'm going to be connecting my NFED half-wave antenna, which is a multi-band HF antenna. Now there are a few different software applications which can be used with the Hermes Light 2, which support Linux and Mac OS. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to be using the fantastic SDR console by Simon Brown for use on Windows. So first we start the software and then we select radio definitions. Click the search box on the top left and then scroll down until you find Hermes Light. SDR console should then find your Hermes Light 2 on the local network. Click add to add this radio definition and then click save. Now from the radio list, select the Hermes Light 2 and set the required bandwidth. Now once selected, simply click start to connect SDR console to your Hermes SDR. Now if all goes well, you should start to see the band scope and waterfall and with any luck, you'll be able to hear some stations. Roger, Steven, compliment. Then the viewer now, real scene for you. I mean, the uh, antenna, cu two element cubicle quad, okay? Ciao, ciao from Italy. Um, very interesting. Uh, my antenna is very similar, but it starts at maybe eight feet above ground where the feed point is, and then goes up maybe 35 degrees, maybe 40. Anyway, pass it on to you with our, um, Dave. I know you said you wanted to get off, but... Nice to work. I think it's the first time we've worked. Anyway, over to you, Dave. And davor, for the KTM, had I had a 57er SS, a Ducati, and davor a Le Mans 3, a Motor Guzzi. I had to sell it to the Ducati. It was also completely rebuilt. Capture uh, of Wi-Fi here in the shack is not too good, so um, every time I, uh, I produce a little bit too much RF, it, it will freeze. So uh, that, uh, that, is, that is a bit of a problem there, <laughs> Pete, so uh, I'm going to pass on that. But uh, I've got a, um, a uh, ATR switch with uh, two vacuum uh, relays and I uh, just have to make an outside connection, um, 716. <laughs> So that last brief snippet of a QSO was Brazil coming in nice and clear to the UK on 40 meters. Now from the examples there, I think you would agree with me that the receiver on the Hermes Light 2 is extremely good. 
and in combination with SDR console gives us a real nice SDR transceiver. Now if you look there on the right of the SDR console screen, you notice the controls which are used for transmitting. Here we can select the power drive, mode, mic gain and processor levels and also have a visual representation of SWR, ALC and power while talking. Now I haven't transmitted with the Hermes Light 2 yet, but I will make a follow up video on making the QSO with the Hermes Light 2. As mentioned before, its power output is only around 5 watts and personally I'm not keen on QRP. Life's too short to run low power. So I currently have some amplifier parts on order, which should hopefully be here within the next couple of weeks. So once I've built the amplifier, I'll be straight on the air with the Hermes Light 2 and I'll create a video on it. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in following my progression with the Hermes Light 2, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications. I'll also leave a link in the description to the MakerFabs website, so if you wish to purchase one, you can just go ahead. Until the next video guys, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.